Lesson 8. While and do while loops. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new empty console project and add a new C++ file named main.cpp to it. Our first program uses a while loop to count from 0 to 4. In this first line, we initialize the counter to 0. The while statement marks the beginning of a while loop and the point where a conditional loop check is made. The loop is executed as long as the condition inside the parentheses is true. Inside the loop, we output the count to the console window. Then we increment the counter. The plus plus is an increment operator, which means that the statement is basically equivalent to I count equals I count plus one. Executing the program, we see that it counts from zero to four. As an alternative to the while loop, we can use a do while loop. Here we show our original program at the top with the while loop, in the bottom half, we use a do while loop to accomplish the same thing. The output of these programs is exactly the same. Notice that the syntax is a little bit different though. There's one subtle difference between while loops and do while loops. The difference is that the first time we enter the loop, the while loop checks that the condition is true before we enter, whereas the do while loop doesn't. What this means in this program is that the condition is checked six times for the while loop and only five times for the do while loop. To put it differently, a do while loop always executes the loop portion at least once, and the while loop might never execute its loop. Here we give a simple example which illustrates the difference. In our last example, we use a do while loop to create the kind of interactivity we will often encounter in programs. Oftentimes we will run through a loop where we ask the user whether or not to continue. Based on the user's input, we will continue running the loop or not. You can imagine this as the type of situation you encounter when using an ATM. After completing a transaction, you are asked whether you would like to make another transaction. If you answer yes, the loop continues running. Otherwise, it stops and you get your card back. Here's the output. While executing the code, I typed Y and Enter twice. The third time, I typed N and Enter to exit the loop. Of course, I could have typed just about anything to exit the loop, since the code only checks for a Y. If we were writing this code in a commercial application, we might check to make sure that the user really intended to exit, but for now we'll leave the code as is. This concludes the lesson.